Hello, today I thought I would try to film a haul video. I am in one of those phases where I just want to smell everything, so I've been doing a good amount of purchasing and some blind buying. So this haul is mostly blind buys and then a couple of perfumes that I had sampled before. There are full bottles and then a few samples. So I will start with the blind buys and then finish up with the two that I had sampled before and that I liked the best. Funny how that works when you buy something that you know you like. So let's get started. The first blind buy is Elizabeth Arden White Tea. This is one that I've heard a lot of people speak very highly of over the years. I think I first heard this mentioned in an Angel Lately video like a year or maybe even longer ago and she just made it sound so nice. And Elizabeth Arden has a very affordable, accessible price point. So this 50 ml bottle um, cost under $25 and it happens to have a bottle design that I think looks much nicer than uh, a lot of the typical Elizabeth Arden bottles. So Elizabeth Arden has very cheap perfumes, which is great, uh, but I just wish sometimes that the bottles didn't look quite so cheap. So this one has a little bit of a Narciso Rodriguez look going on, especially in the smaller size. So the 100 ml bottle is, is taller and I don't like that as much. I've heard people describe this as smelling like a spa, which at the time I was like, I don't know what a spa smells like, this doesn't really help me, but having having smelled this now, I can kind of see where they're coming from there. This is a very fresh, crisp, clean, citrusy scent. It's got white tea, of course, and then mate tea, mandarin orange, clary sage, and some other notes. I've only tried it once so far, and it seems fine. I think that after this, I'm going to stop blind buying Elizabeth Arden perfumes, since over the past year or so, I've also purchased beauty and then the original green tea so all of these are ones that i've heard um good things about on fragrantica and elsewhere and um i don't dislike any of them but i don't love any of them either so to be fair i think people say these work really well in hot weather and i haven't had a chance to try any of them in in particularly hot weather so i'm going to go ahead and withhold judgment until i get a chance to try these out over the summer but white tea an affordable crisp clean scent the next one is from the house of Rochas, which i had always thought was pronounced rosha apparently it's Rochas. by the way if you're interested Rochas, the house, has a YouTube channel where they've got some cute explainer videos that kind of go through the history of the house. So those are sort of interesting if you want to check those out. But yes, Rochas. So those proper nouns in French, they will get you. Anyway, this is uh, Mademoiselle Rochas, which is one of their newer lines um, aimed toward the younger market. I had first heard of this line and kind of the house of Rochas, I guess, in a Veronica Says video where she talked about the Mademoiselle Couture version. So that one sounded interesting. And then when I went to look, I also found, was reading about the other Mademoiselle Rochas perfumes. And um, there's the main one, Mademoiselle Rochas Eau de Parfum. And then this is the Mademoiselle Rochas Eau de Toilette. So the Eau de Parfum version is kind of a fruity rose fruity sweet rose it sounded like and then the couture version is kind of a deeper vanilla tonka thing and this this one is the very light fruity floral that was compared to Marc Jacobs Daisy and Chanel Chanson Tendre which in my previous video I talked about with Luna Blossom I've been looking for something along those lines really nice packaging overall I would say I was impressed by the quality of this again this is very affordable um, on Fragrance Net, this was under $20 for a 50 ml bottle. So you've got this really cute kind of flower bottle design on one side of the sleeve. This is a separate sleeve. And this is fun in pink. So, you know, they're definitely going for that young, fun, not serious kind of vibe there. On the back, it has fun in pink again. And then this is the same design that they have on the actual box. And then the box itself, I feel like this is kind of you know, approaching a Chanel sort of aesthetic. So it just looks really nice. Just open this up. Inside it says, my French chic. I don't really know what that means, but that's fun, I guess. Oh, 
one of the main reasons I think that I was interested in trying the Mademoiselle Rochas line after seeing it in a video was because the bottle style is just I think very cute and vintagey. So this like the bottle shape itself, um, it kind of looks like something you might see on an old vanity or an old aftershave or something from the 30s or 40s or 50s. So here is the bottle. It's got this very exuberant ribbon here. Uh, not totally sure how I feel about this. As it is right now, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know that photo of Salvador Dali where his mustache is waxed and it's just going up on both sides? So it reminds me a little bit of that or of uh, a flight attendant who is just very perky and she's got her scarf tied around her neck and she's just like, here it is, here's my kicky scarf. So <laughs> those are things that I think about when I see this bottle. So like the packaging, this bottle is surprisingly high quality given the super low price tag. So the glass feels really nice. And then this lid I think is metal. Got Rochas engraved on the top. Feels really nice. And then it's got this very satisfying closure there. Um, but then weirdly, so this feels really expensive, but then you've got this paper label on here, which I don't know if you can hear this, but So I don't know if you can hear that, but you can kind of hear the adhesive sticking and unsticking from the paper. I mean, not that you're going to be like rubbing the label on your own, but I just noticed that when I was examining the bottle at first that you could hear the glue kind of coming unstuck from the bottle. And then the label itself, it kind of looks like a, like a drink coaster that you'd get in a bar. So it's a weird combination of things that seem like really cheap and then things that seem pretty um, not cheap. The scent itself, when I sprayed it on paper, it was like, yes, this smells like Chance of Tondra, this smells like Marc Jacobs Daisy. On the skin, not as much, and kind of in a negative way, I guess for me, it's got like black currant and plum. I think Lily of the Valley, some other florals. Yeah, on my skin, I don't know. The, the fruit sort of started to take on kind of um, more of like a sweet tart or gummy candy vibe as opposed to a fruit. So it kind of put Luna Blossom in a more positive light. So this has a pretty naturalistic pear fruit note. Appreciating how natural and real this pear note smells compared to the fruit that's in here. So this wasn't a huge win, but I will try it again and see, see how we do. Give it another chance. I've only worn it once. So while I was browsing for that Mademoiselle Rochas, I happened to see this guy and I was just attracted by the box and then the bottle itself. They just had this really fun kind of vintage look to them. So this is a men's perfume, I guess, men's cologne. It's called Moustache. And then the name too is just sort of like fun. Um, so this I saw there and I was attracted to the bottle. And again, you know, affordable price point. This perfume has recently been having a bit of a moment. It's apparently it smells very similar to Yves Saint Laurent Tuxedo, which I haven't smelled, so I don't know how it compares. But again, this was, you know, 30-ish dollars for a 70 ml bottle. And again, it feels really high quality. This is a very heavy glass. Um, and a heavy metal top. You can see, again, it's got this nice engraving of the name here. And just, it looks really nice. And again, you've got kind of that nice click sound. So this one, my boyfriend and I both sniffed this and both of our first reactions were that it smells like a grandpa, but in a nice way. So it's kind of like if you hugged your grandpa and he's wearing a big shawl collar sweater and maybe he is just, you know, all fresh and clean so you can smell a tiny bit of his soap and a little bit of his shaving cream and maybe he's got some pipe tobacco tucked away in his pocket and the sweater came out of a cedar chest. So a very positive, huggable grandpa scent. Um, it is... Right away, it's it's got this sort of sweet tobacco note coming out, the sweet tobacco vanilla cedar. There's supposed to be a rose in here too. I haven't worn this on the skin yet. I've only sprayed it on paper since I, this is more of a cold weather fragrance, I think. But I will try to give it a test on skin before it starts to get too warm out. But, you know, it, it does smell like a grandpa, but I think this is something that a woman could wear too, and that could be very nice. 
So it's a very sweet, inviting, woody, tobacco, vanilla scent. Interesting. And of course the bottle is very cute and vintage looking. Yep, another one from the house of Rochas. Next up, I've been trying to do a little sort of educational journey on musk. So I've been collecting perfume on and off since about 2013, but I still feel like there are some notes that I just don't totally understand, and musk is one of those. So I thought I would try starting out with some drugstore classics. So we've got Jovan musk, and then this is Parfum de Corps Skin Musk. And I also got a sample of Narciso Eau de Parfum, since that sounded sort of like a plain, plain-ish musk, and that's what Fragrance Net had, so I got this one. This one, um, it's the perfume oil version, so they make it in a spray too, but I got the oil since that was the one that people seem to talk about more. The best way that I can describe this one is that it smells kind of like, like you just got out of a bath. So not a shower, but kind of a long, hot, relaxing bath. Maybe there was some bath oil in there too. And you got out of the bath and your skin is still holding onto that heat. And the bathroom's kind of steamy, but it's cooling down and your skin feels warm compared to the air around you. So it doesn't smell soapy or powdery or anything like that, but it feels like you're clean out of this hot bath and your skin is kind of sweet but in a natural way. It's soft and it's really inviting and um, surprisingly nice. So this this I like a good amount from the time that I've tried it. Also super affordable. I think this one was about $12, $15. So then Jovan Musk. This is the um, just the perfume spray version. I think they make different concentrations, but this is the one that they had, and this I think was under $5. So I don't know if the different versions smell different, but this is the one that I got. Kind of looks like an old shampoo bottle from the 80s, like one of those balsam shampoos, like like Alberto Leo 5 or like Clairol Herbal, you know, old shampoos. This I really didn't like when I first sprayed it on. I've got some on right now. When I first sprayed it, it was really soapy in a sharp way that I didn't like. So I thought that one wasn't going to work out for me. I went back and I was reading more of the reviews of this one just to kind of hear what people are saying. And then a lot of people were mentioning that this reminded them of Chanel Number no. 5 and then Johnson & Johnson Baby Shampoo. So those are not things that I would have thought of on my own. But after hearing that, I do I do get both of them. So I think the Chanel Number no. 5 is kind of like that initial blast of like super strong, sharp soapiness that that I didn't like and I'm actually kind of curious to try Chanel number no. 5 since it's been a few years since I last smelled that and I'm curious to see if I still feel the same way. And then the Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo, I can totally get that now. So it's got that soapiness but then as you wear it on the skin you start to get more and more of this honey note like in that in that baby shampoo. So that that is putting this in a more positive light for me. I think it also kind of reminds me of the opening of uh, Dolce & Gabbana Sicily. That's not my favorite part of Sicily, the opening. Um, I like it better when it moves into the sweeter banana, honeysuckle, vanilla phase. Not mad at this one. Jovan Musk. And then finally the sample of the Narciso. This is a line that I have not really had much experience with. I have you know, seen these at perfume counters for many years now, and I think I've probably sprayed some on at various points, but like I can never remember which one is which. Like, did I spray the pink bottle or the black bottle or I don't know. So trying this one for the first time. I have not yet tried this on skin. I've only tried this on paper. My initial impression is that this is a bit stronger than both of these, which are very sort of very close to the skin, smells like clean skin. Um, and this one seems like it is woodier too. So I am curious to continue experimenting with these musks and see how that goes. For that, I've got a few more samples. This first one's from Penhaligon's. It's Equinox Bloom. And I almost blind bought a full bottle of this just because I've kind of been wanting something from Penhaligon's because I like their bottle designs a lot. And then this one sounded really interesting, but I did get the sample first and I am glad that I did because it's sort of a weird scent. A lot of people describe this as smelling sort of like a tea party in a garden. 
So it's got sort of a T note, but then um, more than anything else, it opens with like a very strong brown sugar note which I, I like quite a bit. So that brown sugar is very distinct from regular sugar or like caramel. And it actually reminds me a lot of this Korean snack that my mom would make called hot duck, which is kind of like a, it's not deep fried, but it's fried in a pan. It's, it's like a yeast raised dough. And then you fill it with a spoonful of brown sugar. So then you put it in the pan and then the brown sugar melts and it's just delicious. It's sort of like a flat pancakey thing, that yeast raised. So really tasty and this uh, brown sugar kind of reminds me of that too. So that is really nice, but then it's combined with very um, strong florals and more than anything else, the florals were reminding me kind of of, I once smelled this very old bottle of Estee Lauder Pleasures where all of the top notes had burned off and you're just left with this floral thing that to me reminded me a bit of celery. And I really like celery, so that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it has that green kind of like stem vegetal-ness to it. So kind of curious combination here. Uh, it does have other floral notes There's like ylang ylang and probably orange blossom, jasmine. So I am curious to try this out in different conditions to see how it goes. And maybe I will end up buying a bottle of this, but I'm glad to be sampling it first because it's a little bit strange. The next sample is Trusardi Donna, the Eau de Parfum. And this was one that I've been hearing about on YouTube a fair amount. And it's got the notes listed here, which is nice. So it's got yuzu, uh, water fruits, orange blossom, jasmine tea, nymphia, white patchouli, cedarwood, sandalwood, vanilla. This, when I first sprayed it, reminded me of something very familiar, and I think it is actually another Body Shop perfume oil from the 90s. There was one called Ananya that I used to wear, and again, it's one of those things where just, I don't know if that's accurate to what that perfume actually was, but I was gratified to see that when I went to Fragrantica, I was not the only one who thought this, so there were at least, I think, five other people who made that connection, so. So I'm not totally making that up. This might smell like Ananya from The Body Shop. My first impressions of this are that it is, it is a citrus scent, but it's not a sharp or sour citrus. It's a much kind of sweeter, rounder, kind of warmer citrus. I don't know what water fruits are, but I get kind of a lychee vibe from the opening, that kind of sweet, juicy, watery note, more so than a, a sour yuzu. I don't get a lot of um, sourness out of this. So I don't totally know how I feel about that. With my citruses, I tend to like them a bit crisper and brighter, and then this one kind of moves into sort of warm florals and that woody vanilla base. Um, so a little bit undecided about this one, but I've only tried it once, so keep trying that one. The next one is Alien Flora Futura by Mugler. Mugler. That was another thing that happened when I kind of took a break from perfume between 2017 and 2020. Um, suddenly Thierry Mugler was Mugler. And um, I guess the original Alien got reformulated, which is kind of a bummer because that was one that I'd always kind of meant to buy. I'd sampled it many times and I liked it. And I always just kind of thought that it would be there if I wanted to buy a full bottle, but I guess not so much anymore. But anyway, this is the Flora Futura version, which I'm mostly sort of attracted to because of this really pretty pastel pink peach bottle. Just from selling on paper, I'm not super impressed. It kind of smells like a, a weaker version of Alien. That's kind of a paler, not as, not as full of personality as Alien. So, you know, maybe it'll be different on skin, but very, very pretty bottle. This next one, I really hate this. <laughs> this is um, the first perfume from Amouage that I've ever, ever tried. And that's, Amouage is a house that I've been curious about since people seem to, if they like Amouage, they really like Amouage. Mm -hmm. Blossom Love. This is a newer release and it seemed, it sounded like it would be pretty accessible. So I thought this might be a good place to start. It also listed a cherry blossom note, which I really like. It's also supposed to have uh, amaretto and almond in there too. So I was picturing in my head something kind of light and delicate and a little fruity and sweet, but not too sweet. That is not this. So you can see the juice itself is this really dark, 
orange red color. This is not light. It is not delicate at all. It is just very heavy. I I thought I had thrown away the strip that I sprayed this on. I was confused why I kept getting whiffs of this perfume, but apparently I didn't throw away the strip, so I still have it. And you can see that it is stained red here on, on the end there. Oh, I really, I really don't like this. There's something in here that is just very gross to me. It smells kind of like, like fruits plus burned rubber. It's very heavy, it's very strong, it's very thick, it's very unpleasant to me. And I don't get any amaretto or cherry or almond or any anything like that. It's just kind of this heavy burned rubber scent. Reading the reviews on Fragrantica, it seems like there are a lot of people who said that they, they really didn't like this at first, but then they grew to love it. I, so I'll keep this around and maybe I will try it again in the future, but I think not, not in the near future. I, the original experience with this was just really unpleasant. So not looking forward to trying this anytime soon, but who knows, maybe this could become great. This is another one that I didn't try on skin and thank goodness, because I feel like this is one that you would not be able to get out, but I don't know, maybe it's amazing when you put it on skin and it's bad on paper. Anyway, this is going to be set aside and I'm not going to come back to this for a while. All right, moving on to one that's not a blind buy. This is Angel Innocent from Terry Mugler. So I am someone who liked Alien, but really, really, really strongly disliked Angel. So I've never liked Angel and it's kind of scared me away from trying any of the flankers. But um, a year or so ago, someone I did a swap with gave me a sample of Innocent and I was very surprised to find that I actually really like this. There's no patchouli in here, and I think that's probably one of the main things that turned me off about Angel. It's also a really nice kind of um, simple bottle design too. So you've got this Angel Star gem on the cap here, and then it's just a very simple glass with these cut stars in there. So it's really pretty. The scent, to me, this smells very much like Toblerone and then also Christmas trees. So it's got a praline note, which is, I'm, I'm assuming that's where I'm getting the Toblerone reference from. It's not so much the chocolate of the Toblerone, but it's more the kind of sticky honey nougaty bits inside. So I'm very much getting that, that sweet honey sticky note from the the bits of Toblerone. And then somehow it's also reminding me of very like really strong Christmas tree. Like you walked into buy a Christmas tree and you're just surrounded by all of those pine trees and the resins there and the sap of the trees are really, really vivid. So there's also some fruity notes in here, red currant, things like that. And it's very sweet. So, you know, you do have to be in the mood for something sweet to wear this and quite strong. So yeah, even if you hate Angel, I think this one might be worth trying out. You can still, I don't know if it's discontinued, or not, but you can still find it um, here and there. Yeah, Toblerone and Christmas trees. And then the last one, my favorite one, is Yop Leban. So I always used to think this was pronounced Jupe, but apparently this is a German company, I think, and it's pronounced Yop. This is a little, it's a weird size. I think it's like a 40 ml bottle. Again, this is another one that's very affordable. I got this and a shower gel um, in a set and I think together they were under $25 and then the next size up bottle was also under 25 for some reason I thought I wanted to try the smaller one because maybe the smaller bottle is going to be cuter and the small bottle is cute but I am kind of thinking about getting the next size up bottle too because I really really like this so this I first heard about I was browsing Lucky Scent and um, they recommended um, what we do in Paris is Secret by a Lab on Fire. I think that's the name of it. So that one sounded nice, and I was reading through its I was reading through the reviews on Fragrantica, and someone mentioned that that was like basically a copy of Yop Leban. And since this is much more affordable, I thought I would give this a try. And then looking through, started finding lots of uh, videos about this on YouTube. I know Delicious Delights did one. Um, just you can find lots of Yope reviews and everybody speaks about it with like a lot of affection. So it seems to be very well loved and with good reason. This is 
beautiful and smells expensive and rich so much more than I would have expected from from Yop, I guess. When you first spray this, I get a pretty strong baby powder note, which I don't love. It's not terrible, but it's not my favorite thing. But that doesn't last too long. And then after about 10 minutes or so, you start getting the tonka bean. And in this perfume, it comes across to me as very much kind of a cherry almond tobacco note. It's just really, really warm and rich and inviting and beautiful. And again, it has a little bit of that quality of like you got out of a hot bath and your skin smells kind of sweet, kind of clean, um, but also this kind of vanilla sweetness. It's really, really, really nice. Smell like a dupe, but it does kind of give me similar vibes to Tom Ford Lost Cherry and Hermes Ombre Narguil, um, that kind of warm fruit to tobacco, slightly boozy quality. Like it, it feels on the same level as, as those expensive brands and it's such a bargain. It's got good projection, creates a gorgeous scent cloud around you. So you're just gonna get these wafts coming off of your skin of like this cherry, almond, tobacco, vanilla, tonka bean scent. Um, so, so, so beautiful. I already wanna buy another bottle of this. And the bottle itself is pretty cute too. Like something about this cap makes it feel a little bit nautical to me in a way that is fun. It's got a, I don't know what this design is supposed to be, maybe a rope or a tassel or something. But yeah, Yop Laban. This was a love for me. I'm really happy to have this one in my collection. So there you have it. Here is the haul all together. And only one thing, only one of these was a total fail. And maybe not, maybe this is gonna be something where I end up loving it, but we'll see. So not too bad overall. If you know any of these perfumes or if you have thoughts on any of them, if you've got thoughts on musks or grandpa scents, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And otherwise I will see you next time.